What is going on, Simulation? Oh, I'm looking crazy. That light is look at the change. Let me change the color of this. It's a more neutral. So I'll leave it a little further down. Basically shining. Y'all like the new green? Um, I don't have the all set up because my laptop is actually doing something else. Oh, that's cute. Let me get that. Oh, I like that. It's like a more of a neutral tone. Oh, I see the sun shining over there. Let's fix this. Like, Y'all like the shirt? Oh. MC Shaky Live. <laughs> Shout out to Picasso Art on Instagram, who actually is doing the shirts. Um, and we're working on putting together a thing where the shirts can be purchased. This one, as well as the other Sip Nation shirts. So, um, so what's up, Sip Nation? How are y'all today? So, right quick. Um, shout out to everybody that's sending emails to shakycredit at gmail.com. I've actually answered uh, a few questions and I got some great questions that I want to answer as we do subsequent videos. But don't forget to like, subscribe, and share as well as get y'all credit reports as y'all should have learned in the last video how to do that for like cheap. Because you don't know where you're going. You don't know how to get there unless you know where you're going. Y'all got that? So, um... So today I want to talk about trade lines because one of the questions I got was, should I use a CPM? And I will do a video about that next, but I want, to, I want you to understand what a trade line is before we get into um, a CPM. And so your trade lines are any, it's getting right into it. So this is going to be a rather quick video, uh, but I'll just go ahead and, and break it down to y'all what a trade line is. Um, a trade line is any, reporting line on your credit and there are two types of trade lines so so on your credit you have companies that report their history with you financially for example you might have a credit card or you might have a car loan your car loan reports to the credit bureaus your payment history and your dealings with them how y'all trade it um that's where the word trade line comes from it comes from trade line and it just is reporting the history that they have with you and this is how they populate your credit score so y'all got that all right so check this out and i'm trying and i don't like to sound all technical and nerdy so it's just really this is basically in layman's terms bare bones what a trade line actually is um and the question was the question came from also i actually had another question that asked if i should buy a trade line so let me just explain to you what a trade line actually is it's any line that's reporting on your credit everything that is something that's reporting your history with them of how you trade it is considered a trade line and it's the very foundational how you get your credit score trade lines tell how you trade. if you have no credit trade lines you have no credit if you have 10 trade lines you have credit and this is what it is reporting and that's how it is. So today I'm gonna show you a good trade line and a bad trade line because both of them I have a good one and I have a bad one on my credit. And I want to show you what it actually shows. And then I will tell you about the buying the trade line uh thing and whether you should or shouldn't or what have you. So let's pull up, let me pull up uh this screen, which is my credit report that I pulled the other day. Um, and it's just, oh, let me make it bigger for y'all. Yikes. All right, there it goes. So this is just my credit and my credit report. So the first, now let me go with the bad one first. And then we'll do, we'll do, take the bad first. So this is a bad trade line. This is what I have from Discover. Um, long story short, it shows my payment history with Discover. I have a Discover card. I do not have the Discover card because it's showing, it's showing closed. And it's reporting as a charge off on my credit. So, which is where I wanted it to go. But the reason why because it's easier to fight an account to dispute an account that's in collections than it is an account that is actually opened or whatever whatever so um and as you can see this will happen with discover with me and i'll just tell you what actually happened before i get into it but um so i got a discover card and i start it started out with um like two three four five hundred i don't remember what it was five hundred dollar limit or something like that and um uh, they give me a, a credit increase to like fifteen hundred dollars within like 90 days of paying with them um so it shows that it shows like my payment history boom 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 and so for two four six wait one two three four five six so for six months we had no issues i had no issues with discover card so what happened was in september of last year so a year ago september um i had a Two-day late payment. I swear on everything I told you. Two-day late payment with Discover, which was the September 3rd. 
But they put it as a 30 day late payment, even though it was just literally two days from the actual due date. So what I did was I just was like, okay, listen, I called them. I was like, look, I'm sorry. It was just a miscommunication. My finances were not lining up with whatever happened. And I went ahead and paid a late fee and got back right. And as you can see, it was boom, paid correctly for three more months. Now, um, but this is history. It's actually that history. But but me discovered was fussing because I was like, listen, can you take the late payment off? It was one late payment one time. My fault. Hey, can we do that? And they didn't want to do that. They did not want to discover it was not feeling my relu. No sap. They was not, um, me and them was not having a, um, an easy time. And so what I did was like, okay, since you want to, the late payment is dinging me. And this is what a lot of times were, was my issues. It's just like, I mean, this is what happens. Stuff happens, life. And so you're going to be late. I ain't a billionaire rich. I ain't got it like that. You know, I got, you know, so you get late payments. I get late payments. You get late payments. We all get late payments. We all human. But they ding your credit. A late payment does hurt your credit and hurt your credit tremendously, depending on sometimes the situation. Um, so me and Discover got into it because they didn't want to take the late payment off. And so I was like, you know what? Let me get them off my credit. I, I'm a, This is what I did. I just ran it up. And I'm going to dispute them off my credit. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Um, and so it's easier. It's not easy at all to dispute an open active account. So I let it go into collections to charge off status. And so I have better rights to dispute it um, as far as the validity of it. And that's basically the process. I'm going to allege that the debt is invalid and they don't have all the correct information. And they're going to probably fight me on it because Discover is crazy. Now, Discover is a hard card to get. So I was proud when I got the card because it says something like, you know, I got a Discover card, you know. and But it was like, they are very, very strict when it comes to um, their payment process too. So if you get a discover call, shop pay them on time because they are going to, and I'm talking about literally like two days, they gone, whatever, whatever. So that is the report and the history of the payment history of that I have with them is what a tray line actually is. And that's a tray line. That's a primary tray line because it's my account that I open with them. Um, and it's a, a primary trade line. All right, so let me show you another trade. Another trade. I'm gonna go back up to a good one because that's bad. So this is a good trade line I have. Um, it's my Chase card. Now with this saying, it just shows my payment history and it shows all on-time payments. Um, they recently just gave me a credit increase on this card, but let me explain to you why this card is uh, different to me. I actually started out probably with a two thousand dollar limit. Um, I'll make it a little smaller. But what happened was uh, with this card. Um, what I did was I put, I, I knew I needed, you know, you need good primary trade lines and you need history. So this is what it is. I don't use this card at all. I actually cut this card up so I don't even have it to use. Um, I would have to call them to get another card in order to use this card. I don't know the number. What I did was um, I put uh, my Hulu, Netflix, that stuff on this card. And I, then I automatically set it up to come out my bank account a long, long time ago, like a couple of, a few years ago, a couple of years ago. And so this is what I did. Um, I just, I just, and I don't use it. So basically my Hulu and Netflix charge my Chase card and my Chase card automatically takes it out of my bank account, the amount for the card every month. So it builds credit for me in a sense. So I, and so it started out in 2000 and it just constantly just, oh, they send me a little letter. Oh, we raised your credit limit another thousand. We raised your credit another thousand, but I don't use the card. And so it's just constantly showing good payment history, pays a degree because I don't use the card. I cut it up and don't I don't have an access because I am so bad with spending that if I had it in my profit in my in my hand, anytime something went wrong, I would be swiping the card. As y'all can see, what happened with the, the Discover card. So this is a that's a good trade line. That is a primary account that I have on my credit that is a good trade line that I pay. Um, I do not, like I said, I do not use the card for just foolish. I actually cut the card up, um, which I wish I should have did. Discover card, but um, I, the discover card was, I, you know, for me, it was the discover. Everybody can get a chase card, but um, the discover card was a prestige in my wallet. It's true that I was the grand girl. I had a discover card, 
And so that's why it was important to me to have that in my hand. And guess what? I was constantly using it. And so this is what happened. So those are examples of what a trade line is. A trade line is any like if you have a car loan, anything, mortgage or whatever, whatever on your credit, it's a considered a trade line. All right. So the next the next part about that is you see all the time people talk about, OK, we, uh, buy trade lines, authorized user trade lines. What is it? Those are what's considered primary trade line because they are my accounts. Now, this is what happens. Say, for instance, I add you to my Chase card. What's going to happen is Chase is going to report the credit, my credit history to you on my credit report and report on your credit report the same credit history as an authorized user. So then my trade line then becomes your trade line. Even it's still my trade line. It's more like copy. It's like more like copy and paste. So I'm copying my credit history for that card onto your account, um, to your credit file. And so what happens is it generally boosts your credit because that's a good account. It's never been paid late. It's always been paid on time. It's the credit utilization is very, very low. It's actually zero percent because it's paid in full every month, like twenty five dollars, twenty two dollars, or whatever it is that it costs. And so it's it, it doesn't. So it, it it's a good trade line. All right. So how so? What does this do for you? All right. So you see a lot of times people talking about buying trade lines and stuff like that. And should you buy trade lines? Well, the answer to that is simple. Yes and no. It depends on you and your situation. Trade lines can boost your credit score. So if you have a certain, so what happens is, see, in trade lines, this is what happens. This is what it's meant to do. It's meant to give people a kickstart in life. Trade lines started when the Republicans were in office and credit was a big, big thing. And so they wanted a way to help out their children with this whole credit repository type stuff that was going on. And so they passed a law where um, when you are an authorized user on an account, you can adopt the credit history as well. You reap the benefits or the detriments because if the comp's not paid, both of y'all are, are, are at detriment too. You can reap the benefits of the thing. So what happened is when, so Bob McNamara, who is a dentist or a lawyer, rich guy um he has his wife on his american express card and so it helps our credit too and also when his daughter turns 18 he gets her a part of his america he adds her to his american express card and so now she adopts the credit history so she's starting off life with some good credit from her that her father has um and so that's how an authorized user trade line is added to her account so how did they, so the selling of authorized users that came, trade lines came from this. Some of us, everybody in our family got bad credit. All our cousins, sisters, everybody got bad credit. Nobody got a good credit card that's always been paid on time. So um, what they do is, this is what they started, this was a business model. And this is how they the business model start. For example, I can use my, um, my um, Chase card as an example. My Chase card has been open. I can add you as an authorized user and they will mail me your credit card. Now, I could just clap, clap, clap it up so you can't use it. You'll never be able to see the actual credit card because it'll come to me. It'll come to my primary user uh, mailing address. But what will happen is in a, like a month or so, the Chase bank will start reporting it to all three of your credit bureaus. And so you're going to adopt the history. So with people with great credit or great trade lines, what they started doing was selling this service. Like you pay me $300 and I add you to my credit account. Now, is it worth it? I mean, it depends on what you're trying to do because trade lines can add two things. It can add, so say for instance, you want to get a house and to get a house, your debt utilization, which is a part debt to credit ratio, meaning how much credit you have and how much credit you use. If you have $100,000 worth of credit that you have available, you want to stay around 10 or 20 percent so that means you want to be just showing a use but say for instance you have a card that you have and you always max out on it well this will helps with that percentage that's a great benefit also a great benefit to it would be history so say for instance you only been in the credit bureau about a year or you only have a year of payment history on some things or you're a good preparing history well guess what if i add my trade line to you that's been in effect a couple years it adds to your average of how long your credit has been into the uh, uh 
profile. So when there's that helper, big things like um, your houses and your cars need to see these things. So also two credit cards it helps with because it shows that at least you know somebody who is doing right with their credit. So more than likely, I would approve you for the car if I'm the bank because I see that you have some history with dealing with somebody with a, a credit card. So people who have these histories then started selling a service of adding you as an authorized user to their to their credit cards, which then adopted to your history. Now, is there a drawback to it? Yes, because trade lines can be expensive and Two, if you don't have any primary, which is accounts that, and the banks can tell this, it will show on the credit report whether it's a primary or authorized user, which you are on it. Um, if you don't have any, so if you don't have any primaries, which is accounts that are owned by you primarily, it's not going to be a benefit to you because of the simple fact that it doesn't have the same amount of bang as the buck. So what you want to do is have primary trade lines which are accounts that you actually have. And then you want to have, and if you just need the boosts, those are the things. So if you also do, you want to do some authorized users, then that'll help you like that. But uh, child, don't just come. If you have an account, you have full authorized users, you're not going to get the same benefit as somebody who has two primaries and two authorized users as far as trade lines on your account, on your credit profile. So you definitely want to have a mixture of both. Got it? Understand? Cool. All right. So do you want to buy authorized trade lines? Uh, authorized trade lines? Sometimes. <laughs> do you not? Does it matter? It, so also, let me just say this. Think of your credit as like a sailboat, okay? And negatives count as anchors. Every time something is negative, you're throwing over an anchor and it's pushing you down um, in the water. Um, and think of a trade line, primary or authorized user, as like a sail that's helping you lift up. Um, but if you have negatives on your credit file, any type of negatives, any type of late payment, any type of charge off, any type of derogatory, clean it before you add the trade line. Because you won't see the benefit of it if you have stuff that's anchoring you. You can't just throw trade lines on it and think the bad stuff is going to go away. The first thing you need to do is address the bad stuff. Address anything, any and everything that's negative on your credit file. And we'll be going through that as we go through this um, as we go through this series. Um, this is just free information. You can ask me questions at shakycredit at gmail.com. Um, another question I was getting, do I do credit anymore? I do not do it anymore. So... I, I'm only one person is going to get their credit report by me, and that is going to be somebody, one sipper who has gotten their credit. We're going to do that at the beginning of the year, so we can do step by step while I'm doing mine. So y'all will see the results, the yeses and the noes. Legitimate credit repair does take time. I'm sorry if you think it doesn't. If you think there's a magic button and all this sweeps and stuff like that, and we're talking about that as we go along, none of that is is true. Legit, just like it took you time to mess it up, it does take time to fix. But if you're diligent, save you some money and do what we talk about and you will have good credit by the end of the year. I can guarantee that. That's what I can guarantee you. And if I, it's for, and you will only be in the pay some stamps or something <laughs> and some certified others. Um, if you have, I do have, not, keep in mind there are some trade line people that are not, um, so this is I am horror stories. If you can't see the person, if you can't go talk to the person, if you can't, so if you can't, so this is what now don't just don't just Google trade lines and think all these companies are great and these people selling trade lines for hundred dollars and all this stuff like that. Generally, somebody's gonna charge you like two, three hundred dollars to do this service for them because it's worth it for that. So if you ain't getting three and above, if you see somebody selling trade line for hundred dollars is bull, you're gonna be wasting your hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars is bull. Um, about three hundred dollars is the average for a wholesale trade line, um, and between the three and five hundred dollar range is what you see. Like if you wanted to be on my credit card, I would charge you five hundred dollars. It has no, it has no bad payment history. It's going to add, you know, so whatever, whatever. Not on my bad Discover, but on my good Chase card. So that's what I would charge for that service if I did it. I don't. I'm just saying. So understand that. So, um. What you need to do though is so when the concern said the company look them up. Do they have an address? Don't just Google the first thing you see online. 
you have to do your due diligence too. You have to make sure that you're doing the right thing as well. And that is knowing who you're giving your money to. If it's a if they take your money in a way that you can't get it back, like um Bitcoin and all this other foolishness where you just sending it and you can't get it back, that's probably an illegitimate company. But if it's a company that you are knowing, you can go sit down and talk to somebody, you can actually touch or talk to or if they how they communicate with you is, is something that you need to look at. So um again i welcome all y'all so this so i hope i made sense here if i didn't i apologize um if you need further if you need further information about it you can't email me and i can say some companies that i have worked with that i think are legitimate when i was especially when i was doing credit and i was putting it for other people um i haven't really gotten trade lines that they haven't need they have just really haven't been a thing for it for me um I, I, but I've done it for other people and seen it. So, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I, whatever. But, so that's the thing. If y'all, so if you have other questions, remember to check your credit at gmail.com. Thank y'all. Keep the questions coming in. I love y'all. And I will be doing a CPM video shortly um, as I put this one up. Um, so that's what it is. Thank y'all. Hope y'all learned something. Don't forget to go to the credit report video and see how to get your credit report because y'all need to get your credit report and enter the contest. Make sure y'all follow me, Instagram and all that stuff at MC Check It Live. I love y'all and I will talk to y'all later. Uh -huh.